Facebook has just nuked Donald Trump's campaign from orbit with new rules banning hate speech. Now, you might say, Tim, hate speech is a bad thing. And how will this even hurt Donald Trump? It's not like Trump engages in hate speech, right? Well, if you've been paying attention to the past several years and how censorship works on social media, then you probably realize hate speech is just something they use as an excuse to target conservatives for the most part. Because we've seen many left wing profiles get away with overt hate speech. We've seen, say, at the New York Times, Sarah Jong post for years hateful rhetoric against white people, and that is protected. But more importantly, this actually will hurt Donald Trump's campaign because it specifically will ban one of his most important campaign issues, immigration. Donald Trump has run ads and put a ton of money into them, specifically stating that illegal immigration breeds crime. There's drug trafficking, there's cartels, and these people effectively take our jobs. These are considered to be scapegoating advertisements, which Facebook will now explicitly ban. The most expensive ad campaign Trump ran on Google had to do with illegal immigration. The third most interacted with ad campaign on Facebook had to do with immigration. And although these campaign ads are actually about a year old, and according to Gallup, the most important issues today are not immigration, Donald Trump is still claiming that he will be fighting DACA, that he's going to win Yes, a campaign issue. And of course, Donald Trump maintains the position that illegal immigration hurts the American worker. This violates the rules of Facebook's ad campaigns. Now, you may say Facebook's not that important. Trump can win in other ways. And that's fair. So I don't want to act like Trump has been completely shut out by these rule changes, but this will directly impact politics and will hurt Donald Trump's ability to reach people on the most prominent social media platform in the world. The shocking thing about this is that Facebook, by banning these ads, has made a hard political statement and is absolutely interfering in politics by saying they will block certain political positions from being advertised. Facebook is dictating what will be acceptable in our elections and in public discourse. It has gone well beyond just one little person saying some naughty word. And it is now the president's ability to rally his own people. In one advertisement, Donald Trump says the Democrats care more about illegal immigrants than they do the American people. This is part of a larger ad where he talks about cartels and other issues, a direct violation of Facebook's new policies. This new policy put in place by Facebook is the result of a pressure campaign from far left activists. They have been demanding that big brands stop advertising and pull off of Facebook in a massive ad apocalypse. It worked. Facebook initially resisted, but their stock started to take a big hit. Coca-Cola, Unilever, and many other brands announced they were pulling off, not necessarily because of the boycott, but because of the polarization. Mark Zuckerberg bent over and collapsed to his knees and says, please don't leave. I need that money. And now Donald Trump's, one of his principal campaign issues, is out the window. Well, let's read the story and break down exactly what's going on and how I think this will impact Trump. But let me just tell, tell, tell you all, those of you who happen to find yourself as supporters of Joe Biden, if there are many of you who watch my channel, it's good news for you. Joe Biden's position on decriminalizing you know, illegal, illegal immigration and putting a moratorium on deportations is supported by this massive multinational corporation. And Donald Trump's position is weakened. That means if you're a Trump supporter and you think you've got this one in the bag, let me just remind you, as I say all over and over and over again, your overconfidence, arrogance will be your downfall. They are pulling out every single stop. One of the other things they're doing is they're trying to make Washington, D.C. a state, which presents a whole list of problems, but would give the Democrats more senators and arguably more uh, more congressional power. That's because they need to change whatever they can to win. We've got the national popular vote interstate compact. Now we have Facebook banning hate speech. But let's let's, let's break this down. I don't want to rant too much before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give, but the best thing you can do is share this video because I am competing with the mainstream media and their massive marketing budgets, which I do not have. Also, as more as the censorship encroaches, it's very likely that I will be banned before the before in the next couple of months, I suppose. According to the Federalist, they actually they did an interview with Trump where Trump actually expects to be banned as well. So hey, for the time being, 
You can share these videos to help support my work. And maybe I won't be here in a few months. We'll see. If you just want to watch, then click the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell. Let's read this story from Mashable, which of course takes a very left biased approach. Facebook expands hate speech rules and ads, but regular racist posts are still okay. They're not, but sure, let's read. Facebook has had enough of hate speech in ads, at least. The company's founder and CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, announced a slew of new policies on Friday meant to combat incendiary rhetoric and misinformation. Going forward, Facebook will now ban hate speech from its advertising platform. The company says the goal is to create a higher standard of content for its ads and prohibit divisive rhetoric. Today, we are prohibiting a wider category of hateful content in ads, said Zuckerberg. Specifically, we're expanding our ads policy to prohibit claims that people from a specific race, ethnicity, national origin, religious affiliation, caste, orientation, gender identity, or immigration status are a threat to the physical safety, health, or survival of others. Now, let me stop right there and say, I actually think that's fine in many capacities because for the most part, I agree. However, Immigration status is a very weird thing to put into this. That's a political issue. You want to argue that someone based on race or gender or whatever, you should be protected. Okay, I can I can understand that. Immigration status. I mean, we're talking about people who aren't even citizens of this country. Whether or not you want to talk about them positive, positively or negatively should have no bearing necessarily on campaign ads. Now, to be fair, I don't know to what extent Facebook will apply this to political ads because they may not be able to. This, there, there may be hard limits. So perhaps I should walk back a little bit and just say, we'll see how they actually implement this. But on the surface, it really does seem this will have a serious negative impact on Trump's campaign. They say Zuckerberg pointed out that Facebook has typically banned certain types of content from its ad platform that are normally allowed in regular posts. And that's the same case here. If Facebook effectively enforces its own rules, you won't see ads with hate speech on the platform, but may still see hateful posts in your newsfeed. For regular posts, Facebook only bans direct attacks defined as violent or dehumanizing speech, statements of inferiority, or calls for exclusion or segregation. This isn't the first time the company has expanded its definition of hate. Last year, it reversed its decision to allow white nationalist rhetoric. Why did they allow it in the first place? Blah, blah, blah. I don't care too much about um, Mashable's opinions on the matter. But let me show you how this all started. The big news in the past few days, Coca-Cola pauses advertising on all social media platforms globally, as did Unilever and many other companies. You can see they say Dockers and Levi's also announced Friday they will be pausing ads on Facebook and Instagram, while Hershey said it'll be cutting spending on Facebook and Instagram by a third for the rest of the year. Now, for the most part, many of these companies are not saying this is part of the boycott. They're saying that things are just too divisive and polarized right now. What I think we're actually seeing is that major corporations know if they advertise on these platforms, they're going to get attacked by the left. If they try and pander to the left, they'll be attacked by the right. The polarization means that these ads will only serve to hurt their brands. And the best thing they can do is just back off. So Facebook decided to pander to the left in an effort to actually try and save some some cash. Well, this is part the, the boycott is part of a campaign called Stop Hate for Profit. They say hit pause on hate. We're asking all businesses to stand in solidarity with our most deeply held American values of freedom, equality, and justice, and not advertise on Facebook services in July. One of the, one of the funniest things, I, I got to just point this out, is that hit pause on hate is advocating for censorship. And there's quite literally an organization called Free Press. I, used to, I, I know many people from the Free Press, press, and boy, have they sure lost sight of what their organization is supposed to be about. Freepress.net. Yeah, funny name, right? Called for the censorship of certain uh, internet personalities and is now calling for censorship and harsher hate speech rules on Facebook. So please, free free press, change your name, okay? If you want to advocate for censorship, do it. Fine. It's your right. You can advocate for what you want, but don't call yourself free press anymore. Now, you know, I think free press is the best example of the woke mob taking over an institution and wearing them like a skin suit, as it has been described. But let's take a look at how Trump is going to be impacted by this. This is Donald Trump's Facebook ad archive. I have searched for, um, it should be the impressions, high to low. The most engaged, the most impressions, uh, I said engaged with earlier, let me correct that. The uh, post with the most impressions. This means Donald Trump is pushing these harder than anything else. Check this out. Donald Trump, said, as your commander in chief, it is my duty to put the safety of Americans above everything else. And I promise you that will never change. 
Now I need your input on a crisis at our southern border. The Democrats and the media need to know where real Americans stand. Okay, what is this post saying? You're in danger. Your safety. What did Mark Zuckerberg say? If you say that people's physical safety or survival could be impacted negatively by these groups, the ad is gone. What does this ad from Donald Trump do? This is the third uh, the most, uh, this, is, this is the ad with the third most impressions of all his ads. We can already see that several advertisements from Trump have been taken down by Facebook. Now, this is true for many politicians, not just Donald Trump. But think about what this means with the issue of immigration. DACA, what is it? Uh, uh, the, the, the allowing people who were brought here as children illegally by their parents, allowing deferred action on deportation for these people. Trump has vowed to end it. He recently lost a Supreme Court ruling, but he said, we're coming back, baby. He says he will re- renew his effort to end DACA protections. Now, why would he want to do that? Because Trump and even, yes, Bernie Sanders have maintained that illegal immigration, whether it's from dreamers or otherwise, is bad for you, your, your, your physical safety in many regards. Now, not physical safety in the sense like someone's going to attack you, but in terms of your ability to secure your family in your home and have finances to be safe. Trump is absolutely campaigning on immigration still. The rhetoric isn't as pronounced as it was in the past, but it's still there. Now, take a look at Google. This is, a, this is the most expensive ad run Trump has done on Google. And it's, it's a video where Trump says liberals care more about illegal immigrants than they do about our own citizens. In this advertisement from Trump, they talk about cartels, drugs, etc. All of these things considered to be threats to physical safety. And what has Facebook banned? Now, let me just stress this point to, to uh, as much as I can. Just because Facebook is going to ban these ads doesn't mean Trump is down and out. But I am telling you, they are pulling out all of the stops. So when I see people on Twitter, all right, I tweeted something like, I think Trump is on track to lose. He absolutely is. If you think he's guaranteed this, I think you're nuts. Many people said that I was wrong. They tweeted at me saying, no way, it can't be. You're incorrect. Turnout doesn't matter. Trump's got this in the bag. When Facebook announces that they've taken a political position and and these ads in all likely will not be allowed, some people think they won't go that far, that they're announcing this just to save face, but they'll never actually shut down Trump's ads in this way. Okay, fine. Maybe that's the case. But Facebook did just ban Trump's ads because it had a red triangle in it. And then they accused Trump of using (laughs) World War II iconography, whatever. They'll ban what they feel like banning. Trump was calling out Antifa with that ad. They banned the ads. So why wouldn't they ban his ads on immigration? They are going to stop Trump from being able to speak to his constituents. They want to make sure the only thing you hear is negative. Take a look at what happened during COVID. Donald Trump was doing daily press briefings and his approval rating was skyrocketing right around here. Check this out. This is uh, we can see here around the time Donald Trump started doing these daily press briefings. He reached his highest point ever in the real clear politics aggregate. All of a sudden, the media started panicking. They said Trump shouldn't be allowed to have these rallies on TV. So they shut him down and stopped covering his daily press briefings. And then his approval rating slowly started to go down. It's now dropped significantly to its worst position in a few years. And his disapproval is very, very high. Not the highest it's ever been. And, and, and his approval is the lowest it's ever been. But this is pronounced. They want to shut down his ability to talk with people. There's a viral post going around right now from someone, I believe it's a manager for Candace Owens, who said that they were a you know far leftist living in Peru and they came back from the far left. How? They actually watched Donald Trump give his speech and realized they were being lied to. So this is what they, they, they need to do. It's one of the things they need to do. This is a very serious effort to shut down Trump's ability to communicate with you. Because I'll be honest with you, you don't have to like the man. And I am, I've been very critical of him in the past. I mean, a lot, actually. But he's not that bad. And what I mean by that is the media lies all the time. Trump says very stupid things. I am I am shocked by some of the things that come out of this man's mouth. But the media is lying, taking things out of context, spinning things and just trying to destroy him. That's why I believe Facebook will shut down his advertisements. And you know what? So does Donald Trump. According to an interview in The Federalist, this is from I believe it's from um, Ben Dominich. He interviewed Trump. And this is what this is what he was. This is, let, me, let me just read the story for you. 
Trump expects to be banned by Twitter. In response to a question on whether he expects to soon be banned by Twitter, where he has over 82 million followers, Trump said, yes, I do. The president believes the ban from the popular platform will happen in the fall before the 2020 election, an opinion shared by others in the White House. For Trump and those close to him, Twitter's reaction to two recent tweets, including one where he warned rioters against breaking the law, are being taken, taken as warning shots. Quote, some people say I should join Parlay, Trump said. Maybe. We do have over 194 million followers, though, across multiple sites. Trump complimented Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, saying he had been far more open and less biased in his treatment. But as for a Twitter ban, I expect it will hurt them more than they realize. Now, Trump is correct. I'm not entirely convinced Trump will be banned. Twitter was doing really, really bad. Trump came along and all of a sudden Twitter became prominent. But it's funny, this interview comes out. I believe it came out the day before. What's this? Uh, let's see what the date is on this. The 27th. So it came out today. It came out a day after Zuckerberg announced he's going to make he's going to ban these advertisements. Perhaps Trump doesn't realize. Let me tell you something. Trump could absolutely join Parlay. And it sounds like based on this quote, he doesn't realize that it could be on Twitter and Parlay. And he need only make a few statements on Parlay to actually shift the playing field. He doesn't want to. Maybe Trump thinks that if he gets banned, it would create a massive press cycle that will benefit him. I don't know what he's thinking, but I can tell you, losing your ability to speak with your constituents, as I've already shown, is a bad, bad thing. I'll highlight it one more time. When Trump was doing his daily press briefings, his approval rating was through the roof. They took that away from him, and now his approval is dropping, and it's dropping fast. They do not want Trump to be able to reach people. It's why they hate Trump on Twitter in the first place. They complain about it all the time. They want Trump banned. Well, Trump isn't going to go to parlay. I'll tell you what, man. Trump needs to go to parlay while he still can. And he doesn't need to leave Twitter. But if he goes there now and he tweets out, join me on parlay, he has access to these 84 or so million people. If Twitter bans him first, then he will not be able to tell those people to move to Twitter. If Facebook bans him first, then he will be without He'll have no, no way to inform all of, his, all of his base where he is. Now, he is the president. He can speak, but the media is not going to give him a fair shake, and they're not going to mention his parlay account. However, if they do ban him and Trump still does take the parlay and he makes some outrageous statements like he likes to, the media will still probably be forced to cover it, but they could choose not to. And that's when Trump loses the ability to actually communicate with people. Let's move on to this story right here. Bernie Sanders links low wages with immigration. Bernie Sanders warned that increased immigration would lower the wages of U.S. workers. Now he barely mentions it. This rhetoric is being banned from Facebook. And even Bernie Sanders admitted this recently this year in an interview. The New York Times said, yes, yes, yes. OK, OK, you're right. He admitted it. These politicians know full well, but shutting it, shutting Trump down specifically inhibits his ability to speak with the people who need to hear him most, those who are concerned about this. The Democrats aren't talking about it anymore, and that's the point. They say now he barely mentions it. That's right. And now you can't mention it. They don't want anyone to be able to talk about this stuff. What's interesting in this battle is that last year when Trump was making these ads, that was when Gallup reported that immigrant was the, uh, immigration was the most important problem. New high in U.S. say immigration most important problem. And we can see it rose to about 23%. The reason this happened was because the media was covering it. So I'll be fair, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm being reasonable here. It could be that it won't really matter to Trump in the long run because immigration isn't the biggest issue. Sure, there are some hardline immigration people, but Trump is trying to build that wall. Maybe he doesn't care anymore. Maybe the American people have moved on to other issues, and it seems like, yeah, they may have. According to Gallup from just last week, race relations as the most as the nation's most important problem. Gallup's longstanding most important problem question provides important context for measuring the impact of the May 25th uh, death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The question asks Americans to name at the top of their head the most important problem facing the nation. Gallup has been asking this question since 1939, every month since 2001, and throughout the decades prior to that on a less regular basis. One year ago, the issue was immigration. Today, it would seem that the issue is race relations. So maybe maybe this won't really hurt Trump. But I'm curious as to why this has become the most important problem. Now, there are some people who might, no, well, they might give you uh, their take on it. A few months ago, 
Trump's approval rating with black voters was skyrocketing. And in fact, in the, re- in the past few weeks, Trump's approval rating with black voters, according to Rasmussen polls, was like 40 percent. Now, I don't know if I believe that. Maybe a- among young black men, particularly because of people like Candace Owens and Kanye West. But I can only imagine this would absolutely shock and terrify Democrats. The saying goes that if black support for the Republican Party goes over 20 percent, the Democrats will not be able to win ever again. That's actually saying ever again. Now, what does that mean? Can't can, can the support revert? I'd imagine so. So let's not be let's not exaggerate too much in this story. And I've highlighted this several times. Approval among black voters for Trump may be higher than you think. And this is according to blackenterprise.com. They say, according to a recent NBC Wall Street Journal poll, Trump has a 14 percent approval among black voters with every eight out of 10 African-Americans stating they they are uncomfortable with the possibility of him getting reelected. Another poll conducted by Black Pack showed that most African-Americans are not only dissatisfied with the current administration, but the overall state of the country right now. The survey shows that 76 percent of black voters are completely dissatisfied with the overall direction of the country. They say, despite the low numbers, there's only one half of the story with black voters as a uh, with black voters as a majority may seemingly move in one direction. There is still a stark divide between genders in the same Wall Street Journal poll. The results show that 24 percent of black men approved of Trump in comparison with 6 percent of black women who approved of the current president, the uh, uh, who, who approved of the current president. The current president is Trump. These polling results are still low compared to other ethnic groups. Thirty two percent of Latino men. Yeah, yeah, you get the point. The point is that Trump's approval rating may be a lot higher among minorities. And now race relations becomes the most important issue. If Trump can actually tackle this issue, then he may still win. So many people on the right, many conservatives have actually pointed out that Trump's weakest position right now, it's actually white Americans. Trump is losing support among white Americans, but this could be due to the far left lurch of the progressive left. But he's actually been gaining support among black Americans, something that can actually help him win. It's hard to know exactly how these things will play out. But there's one thing I can say. So long as these social media companies continue to censor speech and target Trump, especially on his campaign issues, we are going to see people start to adopt these positions because you'll never hear a counter argument. This is what's scary. On Facebook, people who might say, hey, did you hear about this story? No, I didn't. And then you'll get banned. So certain ideas and certain stats and facts will be removed. Donald Trump won't be able to campaign on an issue that still ranks in the top issues for the country. He will be shut out. And if Donald Trump tries to put up ads about race relations, they could just argue it is hate speech based on what Trump says. Trump could come out and say something like, I believe everyone should be equal. Well, as we know, colorblindness, as they say, is bigoted. I recently did a video where I defended this and they flagged it as hate speech, not a strike. They flag it uh, 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 in terms of monetization, saying this is hateful content. You can't post this or you can't monetize it. And I have to request Google to overturn it. This is how the game is played. They'll argue that if you say all all men are created equal, all persons are created equal. Well, that's bigoted because you are you are overlooking the systemic racism, blah, blah, blah. And they can just claim it is. Twitter banned. Uh, they put a censor a screening over Trump's tweets. You can't like it. And they said it was because he was at glorifying violence or whatever, when he was just saying he was going to follow the law. Trump said he would enforce the law if he tried to break it. They censored him for it. This is what they'll do. They make the rules and then they make moves against Trump. Now, to be fair, again, perhaps what's really happening is that Mark Zuckerberg is just trying to protect himself with some, you know, some surface level PR gesture that won't really do anything. Maybe he won't really enforce anything. And he's just scared about people pulling out. So he needs to, you know, save face. Or maybe he really will take he really will take these actions. But let me tell you something, man. If you think that Donald Trump is guaranteed to win, that's when you lose. Trump touts ratings for rally Fox News Town Hall. These are the real polls. Maybe Trump's got, what, 83 or so million followers. Not every single one of them really like the guy. Some people follow him just because they reply to him and complain on every post he makes. The real ratings over at Fox News, perhaps it was a massive showing. But perhaps a lot of these people do hate him. I think it's fair to say that the ratings are good news for Trump. That's the best assumption you could probably make, because most people who want to listen to him really, really like the guy. People who hate him probably don't know anything he has to say. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't hate him as much if they actually listened to what he was talking about. So that's why I think it's fair to say these, these probably are the real ratings. So I'll leave you with this. 
I lean towards Trump losing as of right now, ever so slightly for one reason. The well, for a couple of reasons, the, the, the attacks they're 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 leveling against Trump, mail in voting, all of these things will pile up. They're not just going for one strategy. They're leveling the playing field, but also the hubris of the Trump supporter who thinks they're guaranteed to win. I believe Trump can win. I believe is a really, really, really good chance to win. I believe there's a really great chance of Republicans to take everything based on all the riots and the social justice stuff and the tearing down of statues. But I also think that too many people take victory for granted. They won't stand up and they're too arrogant. We know we're going to win. And the longer you keep saying that, the more people believe it. And the more, the less likely they are to actually go out and vote. Why? They don't need to. We won. It's exactly why Hillary Clinton lost. So by all means, keep sitting. He's going to win. He's going to win. I know he's going to win. And that's why Hillary Clinton lost. They were so sure. And then no one showed up. So you better show up if you think he's, if, 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 you, if you want him to win. Same is true for people who don't want him to win. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCastNews. And I will see you all then.